what really sticks out in my mind though are those cases where you have a family group, right? That it's very clear that, that they're, they're an economic migrant, right? And you, and you know, genuinely, they're really good people. You just feel it in your heart, they're really good people. And it's no one's looking, go. Just let us go, we won't say anything, right? But that's when your ethical behavior, your ethics has to be the strongest, when no one's looking. Uh, my name is Victor Manjarez, Jr. I am the Associate Director for the Center for Law and Human Behavior. I, said, I, I spent my entire career, uh, almost my adult, all my adult life, in law enforcement with the U.S. Border Patrol. And uh, ethics was a constant thing. It was an everyday thing. It, it's whatever guides your behavior, you know, hopefully you do the right thing. You did a lot of work by yourself in, in remote areas, uh, you know, your, your closest backup, someone to respond to help, you might be three, four hours away. And that, so you had a lot of decision making at a, at a very early part in your career. And so, you know, the idea of ethical behavior became part of the very fabric of who I am. You, you know, um, when, when you get into any kind of law enforcement uh, position, it's pretty stringent in terms of who they accept in. You know, one of the things that the most agencies, if not all agencies are looking for, is uh, someone of high caliber of ethical standards or ethical behavior. Now, I couldn't have gotten the position if, if I didn't exhibit some kind of ethical behavior as, as a younger man. And I thought it was pretty strong. And, and it is, I think it's even gotten stronger throughout my career, you know, and as a young agent, uh, where I start out in San Diego, there's a place called Old Time Mountain. And you would be working traffic, and then and traffic could be, you know, an uh, economic migrant that was crossing. It could be a drug smuggler. It, it could be a whole host of things. And, then, and oftentimes, we, we would in, encounter people that, you know, I, I, I now call economic migrants that, you know, the poorest of the poor, uh, and that you would encounter, and you, and you would generally feel sorry, and have some compassion, and some empathy on the deal. But my, my sworn duty was to enforce the immigration laws of the United States. As, as much as I wanted to say, you know, turn my head and say, hey, just, just go on and, and, and uh, make your life. I didn't see a thing on that. That was clear. It was desirable and unethical. And I've had groups where they wanted to offer me money. In essence, their entire belongings, from gold necklaces to watches, things of that nature, say no one's looking. And that, and that simply wasn't the right thing to do. Um, and the uh, same thing with, with narcotics throughout my career. I said, well, do you take part of it and just let me go? Uh, um, and it just wasn't going to happen. That just wasn't who I am. What really sticks out in my mind, though, are those cases where you have a family group, right? That it's very clear that, that they're, they're an economic migrant, right? There was a particular family, and it was traveling with their grandma. And, and I remember the, the grandmother... It, it, I don't want to say begging, but was really pleading, let us go, let us go. We just want to be with our rest of our family in, in Los Angeles. When you hear those and you, and, you, and you know genuinely they're really good people, but they have this fear of going back and it's no one's looking, go. Just let us go. We won't say anything, right? But that's when your ethical behavior, your ethics has to be the strongest, when no one's looking. And, that, and, and so I explain it. Uh, uh, think of what you're asking me. Um, you're asking me to betray who I am, betray the promise I made. And I said, the only, thing I, the, prom the only promise I can make to you is that I will treat you with compassion. And so I remember that fa that family group, and the uh, woman was, she was pleading on that. And uh, your heart really hurts on that. And it's, I mean, making a great argument and you're, and, and you're thinking, I'm not, I'm not the judge. I've been retired now. Um, six years from the agency I used to work for. And the ideas of honor first and, and those ideals are still, uh, you know, as heavy on me as they were when I was in government uh, agency. I don't mean heavy as a, a negative thing, but something that I cherish and value. What I've learned uh, through my life that every action has some kind of consequence. Some are good consequences, some are bad consequences but the ability to get up in the morning and look yourself in the mirror, uh, the ability to feel good about of who you are, where you've been, where you're going, you can't place a dollar value on that. 